So what is adjacent segment disease? Well, that is basically the situation where you've had a prior lumbar fusion and the additional levels above or below start to degenerate, become symptomatic, and may be a source of pain. Now, there's a lot of theories that surgery gives you a advanced or more risk of developing the need for additional surgeries down the road. But is that really true? And if it is, why? So there was a paper published in uh, 2022, a, a very good paper, actually, uh, Dr. Uh, Meshrega. I'm not sure if I'm saying the name right, but it was a great paper. It basically looked at a bunch of uh, research papers, put the information together, and tried to come up with some ideas on does this process uh, make sense and is it related to the types of surgeries that you do. So what they did is they took over 6,800 articles and looked at them to identify ones they thought were pretty good and should be analyzed further. They took 35 of these articles and put all the patients together into a giant pool of information. It's called a meta-analysis. And of the 7,374 patients, they followed them along and tried to see if you've had spinal fusion to the lumbar spine, will you develop this process called adjacent segment disease? And does that lead to more of a problem? Well, it turns out the level of evidence, in other words, is this good data was pretty low. And so uh, they were kind of suspect on their conclusions. However, they did find some trends. Um, so if you've had prior lumbar fusion surgery, there are risk factors on why you may develop the need for additional uh, treatments because of pain or discomfort or whatnot. And one is if you're overweight, high BMI, body mass index, um, that they went over the various numbers. But basically, if you're considered obese or have more weight, you're at a higher risk of developing this adjacent level problem. So this is a risk factor intrinsic to your body. Now, the other three are kind of interesting. One is something called a floating fusion. The other one is called a superior facet uh, joint violation. And the third is called decompression outside the fusion levels. Well, these are factors actually determined by your surgeon. So a floating fusion is you do a fusion operation to your lower back, but you don't include the last segment the L5-S1 segment. It turns out if you don't do this based on this analysis, you're at a higher risk of developing adjacent level or adjacent segment disease. Uh, number two, if your surgeon during the operation had to put the screw in to do your fusion and that screw actually went into the joint above, there's something called a facet joint. This is These are the facet joints back there. And sometimes when you put the screws in, sometimes you have you, you, you inadvertently go into that joint. If you do that, it turns out you're again at a higher risk of developing adjacent segment uh, disease. And then the final risk factor that's kind of identified is decompressing out of the fusion levels. So let me give you an example. If you have a fusion just to this part of the body, these two segments, and then you also remove bone above it, it's called a superior decompression above the fusion, it turns out now you've loosened or removed some of the stabilizers. So now you're at risk of developing this adjacent segment um, disease. Now, the research is still pretty low quality, so it's not conclusive per se, but we used to think that if you had spinal fusion operations, you're gonna have a risk of having more fusions or more operations down the road. It turns out the numbers aren't that stark. Um, so it's definitely less than 50% of people. And based on this information, these are the risk factors that you should think about before you have spinal fusion operations. Number one, if you're overweight, high BMI, you may would need to consider that. And these three things you need to talk to your surgeon. One, are you gonna fuse to the lowest level, L5S1, or are you gonna stop before that? That turns out to be a risk factor. If your surgeon doesn't have a lot of experience, sometimes they inadvertently go into that facet joint above and that, gives an increased risk of developing adjacent segment uh, disease. And then finally, if your surgeon thinks that you need to also remove bone or decompress bone pressing on your nerves or your spinal canal above a fusion, uh, you might want to have a discussion on why uh, that person is not incorporating your fusion into your 
uh, that level into your fusion. Uh, I know there's a lot of information, uh, but I thought this was a good article and I wanted to share it with you all. I hope this uh, gave you some thoughts when you're thinking about having a spinal fusion operation. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, you have a good day. Bye-bye now.